everyone, what's going on? Today in the mainstream media, the major story was of the Notre Dame Cathedral fire. And what's so interesting about this is if you've been following my channel for a while now, I have been talking about how this date of August 10th and August 11th this year are important. And August 10th is also really important to the country France because on August 10th this year, it's the 227th anniversary of the fall of the French monarchy. And in what is called Gematria or Gematria, if you write out French monarchy, it equals 227. And it's the 227th anniversary. If you write out French Revolution, French Revolution equals 227. And it began because of an assembly of the Estates General that equals 227. And if you look up Napoleon, you find out that Napoleon just so happened to be born on the 227th day of the year. And once again, this year, August 10th, will be the 227th anniversary of the fall of the French monarchy. So now we're getting the story in France about this cathedral fire, right? And a lot to do with August 10th is that it is the Jewish feast day that is in remembrance of the destruction of the two temples. And it's called Tisha B'Av. And look what it is in Jewish gematria. It equals 911. And the two temples in history supposedly got destroyed on the 11th month of the civil calendar on the ninth day, like 9-11, right? And think about the two towers during 9-11-2001. And what's even more interesting is that they mocked us in the media today with this story. So another story behind it was that YouTube mistakenly linked Notre Dame fire the Notre Dame fire to the September 11th attacks. And what they did was they put one of their little tags underneath videos that says, and it was talking about 9-11, you know, because so many people say it's a conspiracy, which it completely, it is. So I don't know, you know, but that's what YouTube is doing. And they're mocking us by saying that YouTube placed these links underneath these videos, right? And Later on in the day, look, they even say, both towers of Notre Dame Cathedral are safe, right? So they're telling us both the towers are safe. They're coding it to 9-11. August 10th is important to France with, because of Tisha B'Av that is important to the numbers 9 and 11. To uh, add insult to injury here, if you look up the Notre Dame Cathedral, you find out that it was actually began to be built by this guy, Maurice de Sully. And look when he died, September 11th. The French Revolution, it came to an end on November 9th, which in France, they write the date, November 9th is 9 slash 11, right? 911. So, moving on, if you've been following, me, following along with what I've been talking about, I've been talking a lot about this lion theme. Since we had that Ethiopian airline crash on its way to Kenya, it was synced up to the last emperor of Ethiopia, which was Haile Selassie. And you might know him through, you know, Rastafari, right? Rastafari, the religion, is based off of this guy who died in the year 74, or he was overthrown in the year 74, and they called him the second coming of Jesus, which is the lion of the tribe of Judah, and their, the Ethiopian flag even had the lion on it. And August 10th this year, just so happens to be World Lion Day, and it falls during the astrological sign of Leo, which is a lion, and Holly Selassie born on the first day of Leo. We also have the new Lion King that is coming out just before the astrological sign of Leo. And also, if you recall, the Ethiopian airline that crashed going to Kenya, and Kenya is also where the Lion King is based off of. It's based off of the setting in the movie, The Lion King. It's based off of Hell's Gate National Park that is in Kenya. And think about Obama's connection to Kenya and 
Obama, at one point in time, joked that he was the Lion King. And his full name in Gematria equals 811, a lot like August 11th. But if you recall, the Ethiopian airline crash, it happened in connection to the Lion air crash, right? They were both the, the same Boeing airplanes that were crashing, so there was this big controversy, right? And it was called the Lion Air, right? And it was 133 days before the Ethiopian airline crash, and look what Ethiopia equals. 133, and look what Holly Selassie equals. Has Holly Selassie the first? 133. If you take away the first, he equals 83. Also 227. But 83, he died at the age of 83, and look what Ethiopia also equals. 83. So it's absolutely in connection to all of this stuff with the Lion King. And also, before I even move on, notice. And I'm going to talk about this more later, but notice today we also got a big story about the Boston Marathon and how there was an almost photo finish, and it was between a Kenyan and an Ethiopian. And the Ethiopian who lost to the Kenyan, he was the same Ethiopian who won the Boston Marathon in 2013 when we had the Boston bombing. So I'll explain this in a little bit because I need to explain why the Boston Marathon is important, but first I just want to point out, I was sitting here thinking about the word lion, and I remembered the word Leon means lion, right? And I was like, Napole Leon, right? So I wondered what Napoleon's name meant, and I looked up the meaning, and this isn't necessarily 100% true, because I saw multiple things, but I saw a lot of places that said that his name or the name Napoleon means from or from Naples lion and they're talking about Naples Italy or right Naples so the lion of Naples which is interesting and it also just says it's the Greek meaning lion but there was a few of them that didn't list this but still interesting in regards to France the French Revolution Napoleon Leon Leon is a lion so recently, too, I've also mentioned a lot about the the rapper who just died, Nipsey Hussle, right? And I talked about how he was really connected to all this marathon stuff that's going on and how it's connected to the Chelsea bombings that we had. Then there was a pressure cooker bomb, bombing in 2016 reminding us of the Boston Marathon bombing. And... It's all synced up to Julian Assange and whatever. I'll leave some links in the description here. It's too much to re-explain. But Nipsey Hussle, everything about him was Marathon. He has the two albums that have Marathon. He got shot outside of the Marathon clothing store. And what's so interesting about that is if you write out the word Marathon, Marathon equals 310. Just like if you write out Selassie, equals 310, just like if you read a word emperor, like he was the last emperor of Ethiopia. And that Ethiopian airline crash happened on the date of 310, which is also a date that I was talking about to watch out for. I even have a whole playlist on it about the number 310 and how it was synced up to Corey Feldman defending Michael Jackson with that Neverland movie. and. Luke Perry dying three months and ten days after I posted about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. A bunch of things with this number 310. A date I was saying I knew there was something significant that was going to happen on that day. Just there was something important about the number 310. And it's still going on. 310 is really important. But moral of the story, Nipsey Hussle, somebody had pointed out to me that his name... Let's type it out here. Nipsey Hussle. It's pronounced a lot like Hermes. And Hermes is something I've been talking about a lot with the the Golden Gate Bridge and so on. I'm not going to explain that, but it made me just come back and look up this guy. And I was like, huh, he has a pretty weird first name. I wonder what that, what this name even means, you know? What's the meaning of it? And when you look up his name... 
you, you find out that his father is actually from this country called Eritrea, which is just north of Ethiopia. And when you look up his name, you find out that it means, there's a heavy.com article even that said, his name is Ethiopian and it means sent by God. So what are the odds? Nipsey Hussle's name is Ethiopian and he's all about this marathon stuff, right? And what's so interesting is that, well, for one, Holly Selassie has a grandson with this name too, however you say it. And the Battle of Marathon is really important to all of this too, right? So the Battle of Marathon, where marathons come from, when you look that up, you find out that most historians believe that the battle took place on September 12th, 490 BC. And this sticks out right away to me because Holly Selassie got overthrown on the date of September 12th. September 12th was the day that Holly Selassie got overthrew. And if you think about the, the Lion air crash, the, the flight number was 610. And then on the Ethiopian one, it was 302. And if you add them up, it's 912. And if you go from the Ethiopian air, the Lion air crash on October 29th to August 10th this year, it just so happens to be nine months and 12 days. It's a lot like 912, right? And this is the day that Holly Selassie got over through by the Derg that equals 74 and the year 74, and Jesus, cross, Messiah, gospel, they all equal 74, right? But let me find my post here. The reason it's important was, I mean, with the Julian Assange thing, I mentioned how maybe we're supposed to look at the Julian calendar. There was some things showing me possibly we need to look at the Julian calendar and how it syncs up. And as I was reading about Ethiopia, I realized that they have their own calendar system. And they actually believe that it's only the year 2011 right now. And I was like, well, how interesting. I wonder how some of these things sync up. And when I was looking it up, I found out that normally the New Year's Day in Ethiopia is September 11th. But since this year is before a leap year, it's on September 12th, the anniversary of Holly Selassie being overthrown, right? And it's normally on September 11th. Think about what I said at the very beginning of this video, how all the France stuff is connected to 9-11 and Tisha B'Av that's connected to August 10th, which is World Lion Day. What's even funnier is that right around the time that I was looking into all of this, I had a bunch of synchronicity with my daughter, Claire, and did I have synchronicity with her all of the time? Like, I don't know what it is with her, but I always have synchronicity with her. And she decided yesterday that she wanted to have a Lion King marathon. And she literally watched every Lion King movie and even the TV shows. And she called it a Lion King marathon, of all things even, right? Lion King marathon. And then I discover uh, that his name, Nipsey Hussle's real name is Ethiopian. And it's all synced up to this lion stuff, the Battle of Marathon, the, conventionally on the same day that Holly Selassie was overthrown. And the reason that's so funny is because her name equals 129. And she's also born on July 30th, so she's a Leo, which is a lion. And, you know, September 12th is 12 slash 9 or 9 slash 12. So I'm, I'm going to talk more about that later at the end of this video, but... Just wanted to get the point across that this marathon theme with Nipsey Hussle is important. And it's important to the Wizard of Oz as well. I'm still, I, I'll talk about that. But in, in a previous video, I mentioned how maybe there's something to do with the London Marathon because Nipsey Hussle's wife was named Lauren London. And then also with Julian Assange being arrested, he was arrested in London. So I thought maybe there was something significant about that. And when I looked up the list of winners of the Ethiopia or the London Marathon previously, they were all either from Kenya or Ethiopia. So I wondered if maybe an Ethiopian would win the London Marathon. And it hasn't happened yet because it's on April 28th. But 
What are the odds that today, then we get the story of the near photo finish at the Boston Marathon, and it's between an Ethiopian and a Kenyan. And of course, the like I said, the Ethiopian guy, this guy right here, he was the guy who won the Boston Marathon in 2013 when we had the Boston bombing. And notice his birthday, January 14th. If you write out his name, it equals 114. A lot like his birthday. If you write out Boston Marathon bombing, it equals 114. And he most recently just won the New York Marathon that was on 11-4, right? What are the odds of all that? Boston Marathon bombing equals 114. Just like this guy's name, just like this guy's birthday. It makes more sense why the Red Sox just won the 114th World Series, doesn't it? And the Red Sox won the World Series synced up to the Boston Marathon in 2013 as well. So anyway, I was wondering, since if it's synced up to the Boston Marathon, remember the big days in the Boston Marathon were on April 15th when it happened, right? And then they ended up killing Tamerlan on April 19th, and then they caught Jokar, or whatever his name is, in the boat in Watertown. I mean, just think about that. That's how ridiculous of the stories we get all the time, you know? A boat, he was in a boat in a town called Watertown, but... So the date of 419, I was like, I wonder if there's something important to that date, right? 419, I remember, I've been talking a lot about pink symbolism going on, and Nipsey Hussle was, he did that whole Dr. Sebi thing on, and that interview was on the, uh, it was called The Breakfast Club, right? That's what the interview was on. And think about Molly Ringwald, who was the big piece of that pink symbolism, and YouTube giving me a strike on my video where I had a clip of the Breakfast Club and whatnot. So I know that that is important. And on on April 19th this year, we have the pink moon, right? Just before Easter, we have this pink moon. Easter's on Queen Elizabeth's birthday and so on. But we have the pink moon. So I just went to April 19th and I've, I wondered how far away it was from like August 10th or August 11th. And it just so happens to be 114 days before August 11th this year, which, you know, really stuck out to me. 114 days, I'm talking about all the stuff with the Boston Marathon bombing with 114. And I randomly just wondered what the date on the Ethiopian calendar would be of this day, April 19th. I was like, I wonder what day that is. So I looked it up, and if you look it up, on the Ethiopian calendar, April 19th this year just so happens to be the 8th month and the 11th day of the year 2011. So they could, you could literally even write it as 11-8-11, right? A lot like 8-11 and 8-11. What are the odds of that? And then it's the 8th month, the 11th day is 419. And recall how Tisha B'Av begins at sunset because all of the Jewish festivals are synced up to the moon, and then we get this pink moon, the word pink equals 190, just like the word lion equals 190, and both in satanic gematria, and I think they both equal 50 as well. Let me just type it out really quick. Lion, lion equals 50, pink equals 50. They, they have a lot of connections. I just, for some reason, wrote in the, the only, the 190 one in here, but... The before they killed Tamerlan and whatnot, that shooting really began in the late hours of 418, and then they ended up shooting him on 419, if I remember correctly. So, you know, just think about that with Tisha Bob beginning on August 10th, and then August 11th is technically the first full day, right? And what else is so significant about this is that this year, Passover, let's look at Passover. Right, the Jewish holy day, Passover, it just so happens to begin at sunset on April 19th, the night of the or the same day as this pink moon, right? And Passover is important. If you go back and watch all my videos about the Rams being in the Super Bowl, and I talked about it since last August even, was how the Rams were synced up, and there's this big Moses narrative synced up to the Rams, right? Moses brought in the age of Aries 
And Aries in astrology is the ram, right? Let's just type it out really quick. Aries is the ram. Everything about it is the number 34. Right now we're currently in the zodiac time of Aries, and it goes until April 20th. So April 19th will even be in the time of Aries the ram. And that's what Passover is all about, right? Celebrating the exodus. God and Moses freeing the slaves, right? And if you look up Ethiopia and also this place where his father is from, which we'll type it out really quick. If you look this place up, it's actually where the kingdom of Aksum is. And then this also includes northern Ethiopia. And in northern Ethiopia, that is where the Ark of the Covenant is supposedly supposed to be, right? It's supposed to be in Ethiopia. That's what they claim anyway. And the Ark of the Covenant just so happens to hold the two stone tablets of the Ten Commandments, right? Think about Moses, the Exodus, the two stone tablets. Think about how this is the first day of Passover. That is, you know, remembrance of Moses leading people out of slavery. That's why we have Donald Trump who wants to build the wall and he he addressed the nation on the same day we got a story about Chris Jericho joining a different wrestling league because it's all synced up to that. The walls of Jericho, Moses led the people to Canaan and then they took down the walls of Jericho. And you know, by the way, let's look at Chris Jericho really quick. Chris Jericho, they can't guess when his birthday is. November 9th, the same day of the uh the end of the French Revolution, the same day we were told that Donald Trump was elected president on the anniversary of the Berlin Wall coming down, November 9th. Oh, the odds. That's also why Bret Hart got attacked by the guy in the Rastafari hat. Think about it with Ethiopia. And then Kofi Kingston became the the champion over Daniel Bryan in, in this. And the whole time they showed us this number in the background. After he won 827, which is Holly Selassie, the day that it's Holly Selassie died, 827. Also, the only time that the New Testament mentions Ethiopia is in Acts 827, that I found out. Acts 827, and the, the other time that it mentions it is in Jeremiah in the Old Testament. Jeremiah has a lot to do with the destruction of the, the temples and whatnot. That's what I'm... I've been talking about how it's important to August 11th and August 10th. So how funny is that, you know? And what else is interesting is today, in regards to all this, and Rastafari, which is Holly Selassie's title or whatever, that's where they, that's where it came from, Ra, Ras and then Tafari. And if you go from today to the day he was overthrown, it's 150 days. And... That's super important to all of the stuff that's going on. Kofi Kingston. Look at his name in Gematria. 150. Look what Rastafari equals. Rastafari, 150. Look at Bob Marley. Bob Marley, 150. What about Bob Marley and the Whalers? 150. So. This craziness. It's also why we just got this story, too, about this girl who fell off the clock tower at Fordham University. Fordham University is the Rams. Fordham Rams, that's where the, the Rams NFL team even got their name. They're named after the Fordham Rams, right? So then right around the same time, during the time of Aries the Ram, we get a story of some girl falling off a clock tower, you know, and if you read out Fordham, Fordham equals 310 in Satanic. And Aries equals 227. Remember Holly Selassie, 227. All the stuff with France, 227. 310, the day of the, you know, the Ethiopian airline crash going to Kenya. Also, 419 is the 109th day of the year. And if you write out Los Angeles, it equals 109. And what's interesting about that with the Boston Marathon was when the Boston Marathon happened, later that year was the 109th World Series that the Boston Red Sox went on to win. And it was really synced up to the Flight 214 plane crash that 
uh, crashed in San Francisco. And think about all of this. August 11th is really important to San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge, and Philadelphia. I know it sounds like a lot, but they're they're all interrelated. And that's why Holly Selassie's death day is important, 827, because 827 is the 239th day of the year. If you write out Golden Gate, it equals 239. But we had this Flight 214 plane crash where they had Sum Ting Wong. And way back when, I documented how it was connected to the World Series, because if you write out Sum Ting Wong, it equaled 162. And if you wrote out 214, like the flight number, it equaled 162. And there's 162 regular season baseball games in Major Leagues. MLB equals 162. Major League Baseball equals 162. And I looked up the games that day, and, and the Red Sox just so happened to beat Los Angeles. And it was 109 days before the 109th World Series. And once again, Los Angeles equals 109. They beat them with a score of 9-7 to seven on the 97th day of the season. And then the Red Sox finished with 97 wins and went on to beat the Cardinals in the World Series. And the Cardinals also had a 97-win season. So, something interesting. It was 2-14, reminding us of Valentine's Day. And it happened on the date of July 6th, which is Eastern Orthodox Valentine's as well. So... I know I'm getting all over the place here, but Boston Marathon and Francis Bacon equals 227. And I've talked about how Francis Bacon is important to this year as well because it's a pig year, Chinese pig year. Francis Bacon, Pope Francis. I've talked about how that's connected to France and the Franks and all kinds of stuff. So it's really interesting we're getting this, you know, French... French uh, Notre Dame Cathedral fire. And what else is interesting, too, in regards to women, the, the Notre Dame or Notre Dame women just lost in the basketball championship to Baylor, and they scored 81 points. And then we also got the death of a former Notre Dame basketball coach at the age of 81. And... You know, Golden Gate Bridge equals 81 frontwards and back. Right now it's 81 years. It's been open for 81 years and so on. The word Pope equals 81. But the woman who won the Boston Marathon was an Ethiopian, right? So an Ethiopian won the Boston Marathon, was synced up to the women's basketball tournament. This is Dr. Sebi guy. I think I might have said this, but he died eight months and 11 days after his birthday, even. <laughs> like, come on now. Eight months and 11 days after his birthday, he died during the time of Leo on August 6th. Leo the Lion. So you get the gist of what I'm talking about. I want to talk about some of the synchronicity. Just put this in the video, because it really is related. And this synchronicity is the reason why I find half of the stuff that I find. It's just by following, you know, synchronicity, uh, uh, synchro mysticism, finding meaning in synchronicity. And the other night I was sitting here writing some stuff and I had the Gematria calculator opened and my daughter Claire came over and said, she's like, oh, can I type something? Because there was one night when it was me and her home alone and I had the, the old computer set up because my laptop had broke for whatever reason the laptop crashed right back in right around the time of the lion air crash but she sat there and like i, I was she was trying to figure out patterns with me with the numbers and whatnot and she's do not doing it the right way but i just kind of let her because she's only eight and trying to explain it a little bit to her and that night she was watching scooby-doo and i didn't think anything of it but she was watching scooby-doo it was the 30th episode how to train your coward it was be cool Scooby-Doo is what it actually was. And what was so funny is she typed in Scooby-Doo and she spelled Scooby-Doo wrong. Scooby with an E instead of a Y. And I told her, no, it was Scooby with a Y. And then I explained how Gematria works. You know, I told her that S is the 19th letter, C the third, and so on. And then you just do the math and you add it up. And she was still like, 
a little bit confused, and I said, does that make sense? And right when I said that, Fred on Scooby-Doo says, makes sense. And I was like, okay, what are the odds? So I looked up the episode, found out it was the 30th episode, and of course, Claire equals 30, and if you write out makes sense, it equals 30. So I typed out 30 as a word, 30 equals 310. And if you go back to my post about Sarah Michelle Geller back on November 22nd, I believe, I talked about Buffy the Vampire Slayer and, you know, Luke Perry's in that movie, the, the actual movie, but Sarah Michelle Geller is on the TV show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And if you write out Buffy the Vampire Slayer, it equals 310. And the TV show originally aired on the date of 310. And she's also in the Scooby Gang on that TV show. And then she's in the movie Scooby-Doo, right? So I was like, what are the odds that all of this 30 is showing me 310? And Luke Perry then died three months and ten days later. And that was the same day that... Uh, Luke Perry died the same day that Corey Feldman was in the news defending Michael Jackson for that new movie, Something Neverland, about him molesting the kids or whatever. And the reason that was so interesting was because I was thinking about vampires and Corey Feldman, who's in The Lost Boys, and then think about Neverland Ranch and The Lost Boys, he's defending Michael Jackson, and... I never watched The Lost Boys 2, so I decided to watch The Lost Boys 2, and I noticed every time the vampires killed somebody, they did this distinct whistle, and that exact same whistle was on this TV show, my daughter's favorite TV sh cartoon called Troll Hunter, on Netflix, and when I looked up that song, the guy who wrote it, his name equaled 310. I don't know if I wrote it in here, but his name equaled 310. And the play that he wrote it for was called Pure Gent. And that came out on the day with 310 days left in the year. And the story of Feldman came out three months and 10 days before the, you know, this guy's birthday who wrote that song. Just lots and lots of stuff. I even talked about the country Turkey was important to what was going on at the time. And, you know, Sarah Michelle Gellar's thing came out. Uh, right around Thanksgiving, it was a lingerie Thanksgiving post. That That's what the whole article was about. Think about that with turkey. Turkey equals 310. Corey Haim died on the date of 310. Corey Feldman's campaign about molesting kids was called the Indiegogo campaign that equals 310. It was all of these 310s. And I said, I think there's something important to the date of 310. And then we got the Ethiopian airline crash synced up to Holly Selassie. Just showing me all of this stuff, you know. Even Buffy Summers equals 310. So, it was just interesting. Claire was watching Scooby-Doo, and then I had synchronicity with the TV while Scooby-Doo was on. And Nipsey Hussle got his name after Nipsey Russell, who was the Tin Man in the TV show called, or the movie called The Wiz, that also has Michael Jackson in it. And I started thinking, I was like, the Tin Man... Scarecrow, the Cowardly Lion, and I, I looked up the guy who plays Fred on Scooby-Doo, Be Cool Scooby-Doo, it's this guy, and the first thing you see is that he had received honors about his performance as the Cowardly Lion, like, it's just craziness, and, you know, to go a step further, Fred is, has been an important theme that I have talked about, and how it synced up to my Uncle Freddy, whose birthday is August 10th. And it also synced up to the Cleveland Indian stuff that I was following last year. That synced up to how they're cursed by Rocky Colavito, who's born on August 10th. And the last time they won a World Series, the MVP was Lou Boudreau, who died on August 10th. And he died just before 9-11 happened. He died on August 10th before 9-11. And... That's also, I forgot to mention that Osama bin Laden was born on 310. I, I was going to mention that in the beginning of the video, and I just completely spaced it off. But, you know, this guy's being Fred. I have synchronicity with Fred, who it's synced up to August 10th for some reason. Also, in regards to August 10th, my daughter's name equals 222. Just like August 10th is the 222nd day of the year. 
And in regards to The Wizard of Oz, I noticed that Julie Gar Judy Garland died the same year that Scooby-Doo originally came out, and she died two months and 22 days before Scooby-Doo came out. I believe it was in the year 69. Could be wrong, but... Talked about Gene Wilder, too, in the previous Chelsea bombing post. Now he's from Stamford, Connecticut, and he had just died. And on his deathbed, he was listening to the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow by Ella Fitzgerald, which is why it's important to that movie that Nipsey Russell was in. It's the all-black Wizard of Oz, because Ella Fitzgerald's black. And Stamford, Connecticut, where Gene Wilder's from, is where the first ever marathon in the United States was held. So... It was all synced up to this, and I looked up the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow again, and I discovered that Ariana Grande actually did a remake of this in honor of the Manchester Arena bombing, and if you go back and look at my video that I talked about, the Chelsea bombing and stuff, I talked about how it was synced up to the Chelsea soccer team and Chelsea Manning and Julian Assange and whatnot, and, you know, Manchester is... Two soccer teams or football teams in England, right? And anyway, if you go from the Manchester bombing or the Manchester attack to August 10th this year, it's 810 days even. So, it's craziness. And this is also uh, Julian Edelman's birthday, right? The MVP of the Super Bowl. And the Super Bowl, or the Boston Marathon's always held on Patriots Day. He played for the New England Patriots. Much, much more, you know. So, the Premier League in soccer even began on August 10th of last year. There's lots and lots of stuff going on with it. Kansas, Wizard of Oz in Kansas. Kansas is a 34 state, and it joined the Union 34 days before 3-4 when Abraham Lincoln became the president. And, you know, Civil War was all connected to 34 and 43, and all the Moses stuff was connected to 34 and 43. You know, Passover equals 34, and Sinai, and so on. The lion needs courage, I put, ne ne equals 34, so. Lots of crazy stuff. <laughs> Just the synchronicity is awesome. I think I think I'll leave the video there. I think I got the point across. But maybe September twelfth it might be a day to watch for. Sept also, you know, I don't know the nineteenth. Actually, you know what? I don't want to leave it here because there was one other thing I wanted to point out about Holly Selassie. Now that I think about it, but September twelfth. I also, if you recall, I had that synchronicity with this. I don't, I don't want to re-explain it, but I had this crazy synchronicity with this kid named Austin that I know, and his name is all synced up to the Golden Gate Bridge, and I documented about it on the date of two twenty-seven, right? Just like Holly Selassie equals two twenty-seven, and his birthday is September twelfth as well. So that date synced up to. The Battle of Marathon and Holly Selassie being overthrown. But what is interesting about this Ethiopian Ethiopian can't even say it now Ethiopian calendar and how it syncs up if if you go to August twenty seventh of next year, which is the anniversary of Holly Selassie dying, that just so happens to be the 12th month and 21st day of the year 12, right? Reminding me of the Mayan calendar. So of 2020, remember how the end of the world was supposed to be 1221 of 2012? Next year, on August 27th, the day Holly Selassie died, and keep in mind he's the lion of the tribe of Judah, which is Jesus, and the Golden Gate synced up to that because the Messiah is supposed to return through the Golden Gate. And then now we're getting the end of the world in Ethiopian time, according to the Mayan calendar, 12-21-12 will be the day Holly Selassie died next year. So something really, really important just sticks out to me a lot. 12-21-12 is August 27th next year. I also know that there, there's a riddle with that. Remember when the eagle landed on 
the fan at the Notre Dame and the Clemson game. That was all synced up to Joe Montana and San Francisco and Dwight, the death of Dwight Clark. And I know there's, there's a riddle that I haven't figured out with that. We had the Eagle that landed on James Paxton last year, just after the Eagles won the Super Bowl. And we had that Los Angeles earthquake, that 5.3 Los Angeles earthquake. I believe it was on that same day that the Eagle landed on James Paxton. It might have been, if it wasn't the same day, it was really close. And it was a 5.3. And, you know, Los Angeles equals 53. The word earthquake equals 53. And they said that it shook an eagle's nest. And it was like, why are they telling us this, right? This was after the Eagles won the Super Bowl. I've talked a lot about earthquakes in Philadelphia. So there's something important to it. I don't know what the riddle is exactly, but the eagle landing on James Paxton, then the eagle landing on the fan at the Notre Dame game. Right after the eagle landed on the fan at the, the Notre Dame game. Let me see if I put it in here. I remember the next day we had a story about this girl who got ate by a lion the very next day. Oh, I'll just type in lion and see if it comes up. Yeah, this lion escaped and killed the worker in the North, at the North Carolina Zoo, I believe it was, or something. And at the time I talked about Samson and the story of Samson, but... I didn't know the lion theme was going that crazy, but this girl was from New Palestine. It was the day after the Notre Dame lost to the Clemson Tigers. So, got to think about that riddle. I wonder why the eagle is important to landing on the, the fan. And, oh, no, I'm, I'm rambling. This always happens, but... I wonder who James Paxton. November sixth. Hmm. I don't know. There's got to be. So I need to look more into that. There's. Got, I know there's something important to that. These the two eagles landing on these people. Fire equals thirty-eight. Today has a date numerology of thirty-eight. James Paxton's 30, eagle equals 30, and 30 equals 310, so I don't know. I'll look at it on it. I'll look at it on my own time here, but you know, have a good one. I think that's all I wanted to say. There's a bunch of other things, but well, I'll leave it for a different video. You can come to my blog and read it, it's always in the description. Have a good one, peace.